Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. This is your host, Lorraine Nightheart, and you've reached Venus Unplugged. And what we do here is explore uh, all the aspects of Venus, the archetype, personal love, transpersonal, uh, beauty. What we're doing for the last couple of weeks is looking at the major arcana tarot cards. And uh, as I've explained, it, we're not doing this for divination. We are looking at them as something to meditate on, as talismans. Uh, each card is encoded with so much wisdom. So even if we don't know what we're looking at and we just look at uh, the card, uh, whatever we make our associations with, so it's a it's brilliant for active imagination, and we can also use them, as I said, like for talisman, if one needs a particular strength, uh, we can use uh, the, the card to meditate on or walk around and, and look at it or keep it with us so we can start to understand, like, wow, okay. So the card we're going to work with today is uh, Death 13. Uh, and some people think 13 is an unlucky number. It's not. And it's just the patriarch didn't like 13 because uh, it was, you know, women's uh, moon cycles. We're 13 times a year, so there's 13 lunar moons. Uh, but that's what that means. But this card of death is probably, I think, I feel, uh, one of the most profound, Found cards we can look at, not to mention the most profound concept we can come up with, all right, because we live in such a death phobic world and society. All right, well, I shouldn't say world, I, I, can, I can speak for Western and America. That people have got all sorts of superstitions about it and fears and terrors and all these type of things, but. Uh, it's with us all the time. We're constantly in relationship. It's, you know, the polarity of life and death. So there's death of uh, love. There is death of the physical body. There is the death of a dream. I mean, something is always dying, you know, from the seasons. So we're constantly in relationship with this profound dynamic. Very often when we don't like to look at it, we become frightened. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? And um, if you really, really want to grow into consciousness, death has to be part of your, know, your, your thought process. It's got to be made conscious. Oh, what are the fears? What are it about? Very often people will say, in terms of physical death, well, they're not afraid of dying, but they just don't want the pain before um, and we're constantly in pain for one reason or another. We have pain, and then we have joy, and then we have... It's always in and out. So this card is when we use this card, A, when we want to face our greatest fear, if that happens to be your greatest fear, because that means whatever is your greatest fear, that's your next task. That doesn't mean you're going to physically die. And if the death card does come up in, let's say, a, a tarot spread, that it usually means okay, that something you, you believed in or something needs to die. Got to let go of that. It's got to go. And if we see and experience that, certainly on a psychological level, because, the, the, you know, our immaturity needs to die and grow into maturity and wisdom, uh, our regrets need to die, or you know, our, if we can't forgive, we need to let go of that so that we can. So this is constantly with us. It's not the surprise at the end party at the end of your life. It is with us all the time. So when people are afraid of this or they don't want to talk about it, I mean, literally, people do not want to talk about that particularly in, with the elderly, or a lot of times someone can be 
literally dying, and nobody tells them, which I think is odd. Uh, but for some people, maybe it's the fear is so great, but it's like, dang, what, what are you just going to let them die and not hint at something? But that's, uh, people feel, um, you can feel that that's compassionate not to frighten them. Who says they'll be frightened? They may shock you and just go like, wow, finally, thank goodness. I'm out of here. I am going to the cosmos. This is where I'm going to become a wave or a particle. I'm moving into some extraordinary places. So when you need to let something go, take to look at this card, meditate on this card, understand what it means. Okay, most of the time, in most tarot cards, you know, there, there's usually a skeleton, which is the symbol of death. But that's also the skeleton is. Um, it's like what's bred in our bones. And uh, I know in the Christian religion, if there's, um, if you're up for sainthood, I don't know anybody who's up for sainthood at this moment, but um, when they, they have to dig up their bones and their bones turn kind of a golden color. And that's usually the sign that, whoa, Usually, you know, you've got to be dead for that one. So, you know, what's bred in our bones. So it's also that when we want to find out what's bred in our bones. Or if fear, then you know what? Whatever you fear, that's your task. It could be for the day, for the hour, for the moment. So that's what these um, major arcana do, these ancient cards that are in, in encoded with tremendous meaning. So the death card is when you're involved in uh, a major transformation, and and this is like the greatest transformation that, that you've known, and you must go through this change alone, and you will be reborn into something new. But first, you have to face your darkest fears. And uh, you do not forget that darkest hour is just before the dawn. So if you are facing something that is dark and terrible, meditate on this card. Look at this card. Observe it. Don't turn away. Because that's not going to help. The, the power that this particular, and the meaning of this, or the mystery, this is another uh image of a, of this great mystery of the, and when pain is a is a catalyst uh, and it's a catalyst to the portal within ourselves to the center and that's part of what this represents because fear most of the time doesn't tell the truth it's just fear and since we do know that and at the root of all things is perpetual change, and we're always between the opposites of death and birth, and tearing down and building up, and yin and yang, and the only thing that it, it holds these two, this polarity of opposites, that holds all the mysteries of life and love. And the things, and of course, the death of a romance is just heart wrenching, absolutely heart wrenching. That beloved, for whatever reason, it can be the, you know the end of something. Our prayers did get answered. That's not the right person for you. It's got to go. But we love, and we don't want to let go. And so we go through this death, love sickness. In the Middle Ages, uh, love sickness was, it was considered a disease. And people do die of a broken heart. That is very true. So this card, as I said, is helps us get in touch with sometimes feelings we don't even know that we have. 
people don't want to talk about the end of something. When it needs to be discussed, this is the end. And what what do we do with the end, the necessary end? So we, we can't push it, but we certainly can relate to it. So the 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 skeleton, which is usually in, in in most of the images, you know, that's it's also represents the enduring part of us. They don't dissolve. They stay. And it's actually unless one is cremated, even not those bones. Um you you know, you're you're part of the earth, you give that as a gift back. And so this is part of what this uh, card represents, all right? And it is also an image, let's say, for... Last week we worked on the hangman, you know, hanging upside down. God knows we all know what that feels like. And so that, that the hangman, that's a part in alchemy. That's that's the experience of dissolution into a form of patterns, and the next thing that comes is death in order to evolve. So that's something to hold on. You know, what what you know, what is death? And death is the path to evolution. We are definitely going to evolve. So being able to and what does that mean for one to evolve? There can be this feeling of dismemberment when we're fragmented. Very often the ego wants to hold on to a concept that absolutely has got to go because it just gets you in trouble and you can't grow if you continue to hold on to a concept that is no longer true. It's not true. You've outgrown it. And you're the only one who doesn't know. So in this... In this uh, 13th card 13 is also a symbolic number of the divine feminine and in this card that we're looking at we begin to recognize this dismemberment and psychological dismemberment it's a it's part of like the alchemical process so there's a transformation and it as we once were, suddenly we start, like the word, dissolve. Something like, does it work? And, of course, it's it's painful, it's uncomfortable, it's scary because we don't know what happen, is happening to us. Uh, but what is happening is the unconscious contents and, and purposes of the uh, unconscious is trying to make itself conscious. The unconscious isn't unconscious. We are unconscious to the unconscious. So, something we need to understand or we need to be able to say, wow, you know, at the heart of all of this is love and is the power of transformation. So the ego... uh, Certainly, at the moment of death, is is destroyed. It holds only a pinhead, a tiny little part of the extraordinary knowledge and wisdom that is in the universe. And in fact, that's what death does. It takes us into the universe. This profound experience. And for those that believe in, you know, reincarnation, which I'm kind of partial to, uh, we'll be back. But it still is extremely important to realize the importance, the vitality that death, because death will only bring with it what is enduring what is eternal, what's of truest value. The rest it leaves behind. 
like sometimes in, in dreams. And it doesn't always mean this, but, you know, if in a dream uh, a tree is being uprooted, you know, there's a death coming. As I said, it doesn't have to be a physical death, but there's a big transformation that is taking place. So we need to discover, you know, that the old truths that once were true are no longer true. And we let go. And so in a sense, we we activate death. It's like, show me how to let go. It has an intelligence. I mean, it's not coming after you. It doesn't stalk you. There is that moment, that agreement. Uh, you know, the the editing hour. And that's what this experience is. And most people are into consciousness, and, but part of love and and the consciousness that love can bring and the beauty that is in transformation. That's a big part of, you know, sometimes people are just afraid or we can feel that we're at death's door. Okay. That doesn't mean it's going to open. It just means you're feeling that. You're, something is transforming in you so deeply. And we can feel it. It's like this is going. And sometimes it's quick and fast. And other times it's a lingering. Because we need time for that lingering. We need time to let that dissolve slowly. So you can get used to the idea that you don't need this anymore and uh, have a relationship with what it really does mean. There's a, a guy, a Stephen Jen- Jenkinson. Uh, he has a website. It's called Often Wisdom, O-P-H-A-N, Wisdom. And he uh, just wrote an amazing book. It's called Die Wise, and it's a manifesto for sanity and soul. And uh, it's, it's just, his work is just truly profound. And what he's trying to bring into the world is so people can have a conscious relationship with death and not have it just as something scary at the end of your life. Um, so, you know, anybody who is... Uh, wants to look at, uh, you know, the place we're all going. So, he, you know, he's not going to give you the, the ten easy steps to leaving the planet. It's not like that at all. It really is about having a relationship. What does it mean to you? What is it about? Uh, and it, it's... Death is very rich, and this card is very rich with wisdom and knowledge. And when we can automatically... When something is being transformed and dissolved, a new form is automatically coming up from that, what appears like nothingness. So when we accept the fact that things have to perish in time, which is another thing, you know, death dissolves time. You know, we are really what is immortal is the victory over death and that that we should be in a battle with it but the power to let something go the power to know that something uh, and the maturity so if we accept uh, death like we accept birth and we accept it as part of life, we become truly alive. That's the really amazing thing. When that is part, and of course, we can say, well how, well, how do I do that? And we do it just by contemplating, seeing what comes up, what are our fears, what are our joys, what, are our, um, um, what have we heard? I was listening to what uh, Robert Johnson tape, and 
uh, I just love him. And uh, it was about the the Grail, and it was basically it's about his life. So, and he's and he's talking about you know he's he's quite old now, and he's talking about uh, as he's checking his dreams, if there are any symbols there that he's getting ready to leave the planet, and uh, but he's <laughs> he has a dream uh, about heaven, right? Only he's. On a, on a conscious level, you know, he said, I was raised by my grandmother. She's a Baptist, so I thought, you know, there'd be choirs and golden angels and all of that. So he has a dream, and so heaven is all brown for him. It's like, wow. So he had to let go of his cherished belief and understand his psyche had a different belief. And then I was... uh Huxley, I was listening to uh, the, I guess he was a philosopher, and during some ecstatic state, he said, you know, just don't stop at heaven. Go past, go towards eternity. That's where it's really at. And I thought that was a remarkable, I was like, what, what did this man, I was on a YouTube, what did this man just say? He said, go because he was in the middle of this transformational experience. It was right before he died, and so he obviously was seeing things and feeling things. So there we have it. So go towards eternity, because that's also another way to meditate on this card, to be able to look and go, this is the doorway to eternity. So to use fear, ignorance, you're missing out on a lot. And you can't be fully alive if you're not really aware of all of this. It's part of, you know, the, the beauty of life. And uh, and that beauty will take us into even greater beauty. So if we are in, in the demand for self-knowledge is ruled by fate. Now, for people that don't want to answer that call for growth, they're making it very hard on themselves and everybody else around them. And when that happens, the person really cannot move, can't move ahead or through or under or over or whatever direction. I'm never quite sure what directions, you know, uh, go because we're in this spinning world of time space and then beyond time space is eternity as long as we're in the the realm of time space and life and death you know that's the karmic wheel but at some point when we've evolved enough we do become immortals and then we move to eternity so it's something that we all, it's, we're all going to experience this, and we need to be able to have this relationship. Not superstition. Not scary things. Or really examine as an adult is what you're told as a child. Like Robert Johnson, his grandmother said it was like, you know, gate, pearly gates or all that kind of stuff. And for his psyche, it's not going to be pearly gates. It's going to be something else. So it's so profoundly interesting because, you know, the psyche continues on. That's the enduring part of all of us. And this, the concept of, uh, of death as, as limitation, not true. And it also belongs to the yin side of life. Even though death is usually referred to as a he, it's a yin energy. Not yang, yin. It's kind of amazing. Hmm. I guess why, that's why in China that we are white for the dead. Because it's yin. Hmm. So when we need, uh, also when we need strong yin energy, that surrender, that feminine, this is also something else we can we can meditate on. We can look 
at these uh, truths because death is true. It is a truth. It's a truth we guaranteed we will all experience just as birth is true. I mean, and everything in between that can be true or not true, but this is the deepest truth that can take place and takes place. It's a process in nature. We're always watching and looking at it. It's something that is in a strange way, enlivened. We can experience, I mean, it's, it's certainly not a subject matter that, that, that people are uh, neutral about. It's not something, uh, not a lot of people, as I said, want to discuss this, but you have to have a relationship with the most important, where we're all going. That's the task of life. And in a way, that's how we fulfill our task of life. The task is to be able to move towards our passing. So, uh, I mean, most people wouldn't see it as a friend, but it's we need to be aware that that is where, what it's about. What's my life about? Life is also, you know, how are you going to how are you going to leave? How what are you going to do with this? And so, that's part of, as I said, psyche continues on, but the body, or what's left of it, stays. And we go, and it also having the relationship with death and life. That's the fulfillment. That's the meaning, and that's the goal, in, in the truest sense. And you know, instead of just like hanging on forever, I, you know, that doesn't strike me. Or, I mean, I think I wonder if that's why there's so many vampire people. It's almost like a promise. Well, I, I won't die. I'll just be a vampire, which is like that's not very cool. I wouldn't that life, but maybe other people will. So this card, if you need to make a change and, you, and you're too afraid to make the change, meditate on this card. Look at it. See what it's about. Or if you're afraid, as I said, that's what you have to do. Whatever you're the most afraid of, that's your next task. But you don't take it literally because that's superstition. Because death is a fact. It's not a superstition. Or if we need the strength, let's say, to to end a relationship and we, we want to experience what is this terror and what is this fear, you know, behind that very often, you know, is the abandonment, which is, which is a, a form of death. But then there's, there's the next day or the next love or we may say, you know, I've gotten all the good I can out of love for right now and I think I'll just... Work on myself and become whole. So it is a beautiful, beautiful card, and it's a strange and, and marvelous subject of matter that I just almost tripped over. And it is the thing that when we can have a relationship, you live greater and stronger and bigger than you ever could imagine because it frees you from other people's belief systems and stories so we need to have relationships with it all and that's what it is about so next week we will continue with our tarot uh, meanderings and wonderings and thinking so I know this is heavy Uh, it's heavy because of fear if we look at it and feel our way through and see what our fears are and prepare in a sense, it's not as frightening. It is a constant birth. So may you all be reborn in the most delightful of ways, and um, I'll be posting this on um, Facebook. So for those of you that want to listen, and you can listen to that. And once again, 
this marvelous book called Die Wise, a manifesto for sanity and soul. Till next week. Bye-bye. They're going to kill the love of my life. Casey! If I don't go back to what I was doing. Our line of work is quite brutal and quite ruthless. How far would you go for love? You steal truck, bring it to me. Then you make your money. Is it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous! Nicholas Holt, Felicity Jones, with Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins. All this trouble, all this pain for love. Collide, now playing. Rated PG-13. May be inappropriate for children under 13. Appropriate for children under 13. Appropriate for children under 13. Appropriate for children under 13.